Hi everybody, 2024 is a big, big deal for India and we all know why. A blockbuster political year in next five months, India will witness a political clash never seen before. As the general election month is coming closer and closer, political parties are pouring in a ton of money into marketing, narrative building, blame games and even allegations. But amidst all this chaos, the ultimate question over here is, how do we as voters really measure the performance of a political party? In this case of 2024, how do you analyze the performance of the BJP? Because BJP or in general any ruling party has a very bipolar opinion. While the opposition says that BJP has failed India, on the other side BJP claims to be taking India on this path to becoming an economic superpower. So the question is, has the promise of Achhe Din actually fulfilled? Well, to find the answer to these questions, we went through countless reports and stats and analysed the entire manifesto of BJP to look at every single promise they made in writing so that we can give you an unbiased picture about how did BJP perform as compared to the UPA era. So in this episode today, I'm going to take you deep into this research and help you find the answers to four important questions. Number one. What exactly did the BJP promise in their 2019 manifesto with the hope of Achhe Din for Indians? Number two, how many of their promises have actually been fulfilled? Number three, what are the promises that they have not delivered on? And lastly, are things actually getting better or worse economically as compared to the UPA? This video is brought to you by Odoo, which is an enterprise resource planning software that covers all your company needs including CRM, website, e-commerce, accounting, inventory and point of sale. Last time we showed you the website builder, but this time let's dive into the magic of Odoo's e-commerce builder. Odoo's e-commerce builder is a dynamic and user-friendly platform that empowers businesses to effortlessly create stunning online stores. With a simplified four-step process, users can leverage drag and drop building blocks, customize themes tailored to their industry, and ensure a seamless mobile-friendly experience without intricate backend configurations. Customizing the product page is made very simple with options to set prices with GST. The best part is, Odoo's first app is free forever, so you don't have to pay for your e-commerce website. You also get unlimited free hosting and support and a free custom domain for a year. So if this sounds amazing, click the link below and explore Odoo's e-commerce builder from the link in the description. And now, on with the episode. Let's start with the first question. What exactly did the BJP promise in 2019 and how much of it is actually fulfilled? The best reference to understand this research is this 45-page manifesto which has all the promises that BJP made. So to simplify things, we have put them into five categories which are security, agriculture, economy, infrastructure and social indicators. And you can find their progress in health, inclusive development, culture and governance not in the video but in the document attached below. And within these categories, I will cover the most important promises and I will give you an exclusive document in the description which has all the data about the performance of BJP for every single milestone. So you can by yourself read and eliminate all kinds of bias to make an informed decision about BJP's performance. So let's get started. Let's start with the security first. This was perhaps one of the most important promises of the BJP. To tell you about it, BJP promised a strong focus on national security and internal law enforcement in its manifesto. The promise was so huge that they committed to a zero tolerance policy against terrorism and extremism. We and one of the most crucial aspects of their promise was to improve the security of JNK and the removal of Article 370. And like we saw, they did abrogate the Article 370. Apart from that, if you look at the overall India data, it shows that between 2004 and 2013, there were 9,321 terror strikes which has decreased to just 
2,132 terror incidents from 2014 till August 2022. This means there was a 77% decrease in terror attacks. And if you look at the incidents in Kashmir, they have come down by 32% from 959 to 654 with a 14% decrease in civilian deaths. So data shows that BJP has improved the security situation when it comes to combating terrorism and external threats. This is a fact that is very well marketed by BJP and Modi ji. Atankwadiyon ke samarthan ko chun chun kar naukariyon se hataya. Ab kisi bhi atankwadi ki mrityu ka janaja nahi nikalta hai kyunki jo jahan mara jata hai wahi dafan kiya jata hai. Terrorism expert karne walon ko pata hona chahiye ki ab Hindustan badal chuka hai. But amidst all this marketing and celebration, do you realize we forgot one thing and that is internal security. And here's where I want to respectfully ask the government what about Manipur? Now I understand that it was not a part of your manifesto, but Manipur is an important part of India, isn't it? But even then, while Manipur was burning and it still is in chaos, we couldn't get the situation in control at all. And the worst part is we still don't know how the situation is in Manipur. Manipur is one of the eight states in northeast India. Beautiful place. But since May this year, the scenes have been ugly. Manipur is burning. So with internal security has BJP succeeded? Well, if a state of a country had been burning for one full month, then I do not believe BJP has succeeded. Secondly, if we dig deeper in 2019, BJP had promised to modernize the police force and increase its efficiency. And they even allocated more than 18,000 crores for modernization of the Indian police force. But as of 2022, according to the answer given by the government in parliament, India's police public ratio stands at 152.8 per lakh people, which is below the United Nations recommended ratio of 222 policemen per lakh people and you would be shocked to know that a substantial number of police stations lack the most basic facilities like vehicles and telephones for example as of 2020 which is 6 years after bjp came to power out of 16833 police stations in the country 257 police stations did not even have a vehicle 638 police stations did not even have telephones and 143 police stations did not have wireless or mobile communication and we tried fetching the data for 2023 but we couldn't find it and as per the national crimes record bureau in 2012 2.44 lakh crimes against women were reported but this number jumped to around 4.28 lakhs in 2021 which is a 42.96% increase in total crimes since the bjp has come to power now some people who hear might say bro policing and public order are state subjects so the state governments are supposed to look into it right This is an absolutely fair point. So we looked into the stats of BJP ruled states specifically. And according to the National Crime Records Bureau, the number of crimes committed has been increasing from 2020 to 2022 even in BJP ruled states like UP, MP and Haryana. And the same stands true for crime against women as you can see in these stats. Now the question over here is why is this happening? Where was this huge amount of 18636 crores spent or utilized for? Well, we couldn't find the answer to this question. So, if a BJP politician is watching this video, I would love to know your answer for the same. So, this is an important promise that is yet to be fulfilled. And as far as other promises are concerned, BJP promised self-reliance and export capability in the defense sector. And the result? Well, there has been a 10 times increase in defense exports since 2016 and 17, and now we export to around 85 countries. So, in this case, BJP has done a fantastic job. And this brings us to the next promise, which is BJP's commitment to address left-wing extremism. Vampanthi Ugravad, a third sector, which in the country is under the threat of the UPA government's 10 years after a hot spot. Look at it from the eyes of this hatred. From 2005 to 2014 and 2022, the hatred was total 14,000 victims. Now, there are 6,900 victims. There is a decrease in 52%. मृत्यु 5,790 थी, अब 1,811 हुई, 69 परसेंट की कमी। Unfortunately, we couldn't find any data to track the progress of the party in this aspect. Thirdly, BJP promised to curb infiltration and illegal immigrants, and for this, BJP planned to roll out the National Registry of Citizens or NRC. And we all know what happened after that. Protests in more than a dozen cities, troops deployed, violent police confrontations, curfews, and internet shutdowns. India has seen days of unrest after Prime Minister Narendra Modi's government. 
पास न्यू सिटीजनशिप लॉ सिटीजनशिप अमेंडमेंट एक्ट में भी किसी की भी नागरिकता लेने का कोई प्रोविजन ही नहीं, नहीं है कोई मुझे समझा दे क्या है ये नागरिकता देने का प्रोविजन है तो इस देश के जितने भी वासी माइनॉरिटी वाले हैं मुसलमान हैं उनको कोई किसी को डरने की जरूरत नहीं This was meant to be one of the bigger protests of the day. These are the most important promises and milestones that BJP aimed to achieve with respect to security in India. Other than this, we have updated the status of all other promises related to security in the document which has been attached in the description. So from what we know, BJP has done a fantastic job when it comes to external security, but they need to drastically improve on internal law and order. If this is very very clear to you, let's move to the state of agriculture in India. For agriculture BJP and our prime minister himself aimed to double the farmer income by 2022 this has been BJP's promise since 2016 and this was a very important promise because more than 1/5 of rural households who have agriculture as their main income were below the poverty line so the question is has the farmer income really doubled now when it comes to this debate most people will give you stats saying that farmer income has doubled from 9000 rupees to 18000 rupees but the real stat that you need to look at is the real farmer income which is the income of the farmer adjusted for inflation so if your income increases by 100% in 10 years and inflation also spikes by 100% during the same 10 year span your income has practically not increased at all right so this is how real income gives you the real picture and not the nominal income of the farmers so if you look at the stat from 2005 to 2012 the real farmer income increased by 7.5% but from 2012 to 2016 it increased by only 0.44% and then from 2016 to 2021 it decreased by 1.5% Now a lot of people might actually say bro listen there were droughts there was Russia Ukraine war and there was covid and these arguments are absolutely valid however what i don't think is a good idea is to make the promise of doubling the income in the first place because there hasn't been a single decade in the history of india where we did not face an adverse catastrophe because sometimes there is flood sometimes there is war and sometimes there is a pandemic so making promises that are logical and practical is also very very important Moving on BJP also proposed the development of a warehouse network across the country this is because India is the third largest producer of food grains but we do not have enough storage facilities to store these food grains so has the situation improved in this case well according to the sources mentioned as of 2021 the country's food grain production is 311 million metric tons and storage capacity is only 145 million metric tons so there is a shortage of 166 million metric tons in storage So India just has a capacity to store 53% of a year's grain output whereas if you look at other countries they have a storage surplus of 130% of their output this is the reason why a large amount of food grains in India they are stored in open sheds or on the ground and this leads to post harvest losses of up to 30% so not only has the farmer income doubled there also isn't enough infrastructure to store these food grains and this is again a very very basic necessity Thirdly BJP had promised to digitize land records and the good news over here is that 94% of this work is already done and it is estimated to be completed by 31st of March this year then BJP aimed to complete all irrigation projects under the Pradhan Mantri Krishi Sichai Yojana and out of all these projects 47.46% is complete and lastly BJP promised to launch a pension scheme for small and marginal farmers to ensure social security for these farmers after the age of 60 and to implement this they have done it with Pradhan Mantri Kisan Mandhan Yojana in which already 1.9 million people have registered so again if you see in the agriculture part of the manifesto BJP made seven promises to enhance India's agricultural sector out of which three have been fulfilled while four have not been fulfilled or partly fulfilled so this is again a success this is the state of indian agriculture under the bjp and for all of the promises like i mentioned before i have attached the status in the document if this is very very clear to you let's move to what promises bjp made for the indian economy to understand how well bjp has performed let us look at these six indicators which are gdp inflation fiscal deficit fdi 
debt to GDP ratio and revenue receipts to interest payments. For this, let's compare how UPA did with respect to NDA. Firstly, if you look at this chart, the average growth rate under UPA was 6.8%, whereas under NDA, it is 5.7%, meaning UPA's performance in terms of GDP was better than Modi. But while UPA had the 2008 recession, Modiji's government saw the Russia-Ukraine war and COVID. So this comparison is just too tough and I just want to leave the verdict to you guys. Secondly, in terms of controlling inflation, the Modi government has done a better job at keeping inflation at 5.1% on average versus 8.1% with UPA. And the RBI recommends that inflation must be between 2 to 6%. This means the BJP government has successfully kept it under control as promised in their manifesto in spite of all the catastrophe that they faced. Thirdly, we need to check the fiscal deficit. For those who don't know, fiscal deficit is the total expenditure of the government minus the total revenue that they made excluding the borrowings. And according to the FRBM Act, fiscal deficit should not be more than 3% of the GDP. Now, if you look at our government's performance, Modi 1.0 delivered the best performance since 1991 clocking a fiscal deficit average of just 3.6% of GDP. Whereas in Modi 2.0, due to war and COVID, they delivered the worst fiscal deficit performance of 6.5% of GDP. And if we compare it to the previous governments, the Atal Bihari government averaged a fiscal deficit of 5.3% and the first Manmohan Singh government, despite the 2008 crisis, recorded a fiscal deficit average of just 4%. Whereas Manmohan Singh 2.0 delivered an average fiscal deficit of 5.2%. Fourthly, with regards to FDI, according to the finance minister, FDI into the country during the Modi government was $500 billion, which is 65% more than the amount received in the 10 years of the UPA government. The fifth indicator is the debt to GDP ratio. This ratio indicates how capable a country is in paying back its debts. So the lower this debt to GDP ratio, the better and more healthier is the economy. Now, according to this UN paper, the debt to GDP ratio must not be more than 40% for developing countries like India. But if you look at where does India stand, as you can see in this chart, after the pandemic, India's public debt to GDP ratio shot up from 75% in FY20 to 88.5% in FY21 and then it gradually reduced to 81% in FY23. So here, the BJP needs to be super, super careful. And lastly, we have the interest payments to the total revenue that the government generated. And as of 2021-2022, the centre spent 21.6% of its total expenditure of the year and 39.1% of the revenue receipts in just interest. As in, 39% of the entire country's income went into just interest payments for the debt that we have taken. Whereas if you look at the RBI recommendation for states, this number is supposed to be less than 10%. So I'm assuming that for center also, the number would be close to 10%. So in short, we are losing a lot of money to just interest, which is bad. If this is very clear to you, let's look at the most critical promise of the Modi government, which is the Make in India initiative. India's breakout moment in manufacturing. Electrical ke electronic talk. come. Make in India. 105 billion dollar electronics production देश में इस साल हुआ है. You see, the main objective of Make in India scheme was to increase the manufacturing as a percentage of GDP to 25 percent by 2022 and create 100 million jobs. But if you look at this chart, it's nowhere close to 25 percent of the GDP. In fact, it has decreased from 15 percent to just above 13 percent. And it is shocking to know that while 51 million Indians were employed in the fiscal year 2016-17, employment in the manufacturing sector declined by 46% and reached 27.3 million in 2020 and 2021, which is just before the pandemic. Whereas the employment in the agriculture sector shot up from 145.6 million in 2016-17 to 151.8 million in 2020 and 21. And even in the services sector, the employment rose over the five-year horizon to 119.7 million to 127 million in 2020 to 2021. Now, even though the mobile PLI schemes have worked very well in increasing our exports, there is still a very long way to go. So the question that we need to ask the government is, how will we increase the number of jobs in the manufacturing sector? So from what we can see, Make in India hasn't been as successful as we thought, but other sectors have generated more employment. Now, I'm still starting to understand which is better, but if you have any opinions, please drop it in the comments. If this is very clear to you, now let us look at what promises did BJP make with respect to infrastructure sector and how many of these promises have actually been fulfilled. 
This is one of the most important things that we need to verify because Modi ji and BJP market themselves as a party which builds grand infrastructure at record time. So the question is, are these claims really true or is it just clever marketing? To understand this, let us look at road, rail and port infrastructure data and you will get a very clear picture. Let's start with roads. The government promised to construct 60,000 kilometers of national highways over five years and they aim to double the length by 2022. And as per the official data, 50,000 kilometers of national highways were added between 2014 and 2023, which increased the total length of these national highways to 1,45,155 kilometers from just 97,830 kilometers. So 50% more national highways were built in just nine years. And if you look at the construction pace, it is mind boggling. The construction pace in India grew from 12.1 kilometers per day in 2014-15 to an insane 28.6 kilometers per day in 2021-2022. So even though it has not doubled yet, there is a tremendous improvement in terms of the pace of construction and the sheer quantity of construction. The government is dedicatedly working towards the development of a national highway network of 2 lakh kilometer length by 2025. NHI completed a Guinness World Record by constructing 75 km continuous bituminous concrete between Amrauti to Akola. Secondly, when it comes to railways, the government aimed to electrify all railway tracks by 2022. And by 31st of March 2023, 58,812 km, that is 90% of the broad gauge network were already electrified. Since 2014, a record 37,011 km have already been electrified, with 50% achieved in the last five years itself. On top of that, the government promised to complete the two eastern and western dedicated freight corridors by 2022 and modernize railway stations. And if you see the status, the eastern dedicated freight corridor is fully operational and about 70% of the western corridor is ready to be used. Cherry on the cake, many railway stations have already been equipped with Wi-Fi facilities, which is just amazing. This is the status of railways in India under the BJP. And now, let's look at ports. The BJP promised to double the port capacity of India in just five years. And guess what? They have already fulfilled the promise. The capacity of major ports has almost doubled from approximately 8,710 lakh tons to over 16,100 lakh tons per annum. On top of that, the turnaround time for vessels has decreased significantly. In the last decade, the turnaround time for big vessels has come down to less than 24 hours as compared to 42 hours hours in 2014. These were the major promises that BJP made about infrastructure. And apart from this, the BJP aimed to connect each Gram Panchayat with high-speed optical cable by 2022. But due to multiple issues like COVID, the new deadline for the same is 2025. Secondly, BJP aimed to have 175 gigawatt of renewable energy by 2022. And as of 2022, a renewable energy capacity of 69% of the overall target has already been installed. Thirdly, BJP had promised piped water for every house by 2024. And as of December 2023, 72% of this project is complete. And lastly, BJP had promised 50 cities to be connected by metro, but currently only 22 cities have metro. So without a doubt, out, BJP has done a wonderful job with infrastructure and there are some places where they need improvements. By the way, this infrastructure growth has come while we took up a lot of debt. So I'm attaching the case studies for the same in the I button. And this brings us to the last category of promises, which are social indicators and the promises made for the social sector of India. Here again, there are many promises, but I will cover the three most important promise that really define how the BJP has worked for the bottom of the pyramid in India. Firstly, BJP promised Pakka houses for everyone by 2022. And as of January 6th, 2023, the target of building 2.94 crore houses in rural areas saw 2.1 crore houses completed, as in 72% of the target is already complete with 28% remaining. But in urban areas, if you look at their progress, only 51% of the target was achieved and 49% is still remaining. Similarly, they promised 100% households will get LPG. But according to the 5th National Family Health Survey of 2019-2021, only about 56.2% of the population used LPG or PNG as the primary cooking fuel. And while 100% electrification 
condition was promised, electricity access among the poorest 20% of the households increased from 53% to 86% in the five year period between the fourth and the fifth rounds of the National Family Health Survey. In fact, in 19 states and union territories, this percentage was over 95% as of 2020 and 2021. On top of that, Modi ji also promised that every single citizen in the country will have a bank account. So as of 2021, about 78% of Indians above 15 years owned an account in the bank. And when it comes to toilets, 95.4% of the surveyed households have access to toilet. Secondly, BJP promised to reduce poverty to single digit. Now, as per the UNDP estimates, the poverty rate in India has dropped to 10% in 2021. Now, this stat, according to me, is a little misleading because the international poverty line is measured at what? $2.15 using the 2017 prices. And UNDP measures poverty as people living below the $1.25 a day mark, if I'm not wrong. Now, if you look at $1.25, how much is that? That's less than 150 rupees a day, right? Now you tell me, how can a person survive in India with 150 rupees a day? So although on paper progress has been made, the reality is far from this. And lastly, BJP also promised reservation for women. And as promised, the women's reservation bill was successfully passed. This is what the report card of the BJP looks like after nine years of their governance. And as usual, instead of giving you my own opinion and clouding your judgment with my bias, I want you to read the document and tell me in the comments about how you think BJP has performed in India in the past nine years. That's all from my side for today, guys. If you learned something valuable, please make sure to hit the like button in order to make YouTube ever happy. And for more such insightful business and political case studies, please subscribe to our channel. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next one. Bye bye.